Hey, I found a way to beat Elden Ring only by moving in a straight line, from the spawn to the end. And well, the first obstacle is literally just the start. We need to head straight this way. And well, the door isn't in line. But we can just flex our shield and take a step, and guess what, we're out. This is cause we're in a feral time, a pre-Jar Brayer version of Elden Ring. Elden Ring 1.02, I had to downpatch the game. From here, we just go straight and totally not die to the tutorial. And this is where we need to bend the rules a bit. First, teleporting is allowed. For example, when we die here, the next area we spawn in starts our new straight line. And for the sake of the video, this will be used as least as possible, such as, you know, we're not going to go to the round table hold. And then number two, I need a buffer zone. Precisely 15 meters, six box, what is the metric in this game? And number three, everyone say thank you to Mitris. He helped route this for me, and he did a great job since he's literally speed ran the game at GDQ. It's a double frame perfect input, as in two different inputs that are both frame perfect. So hopefully I can get it this time. Looks good. Yes, that's it. Very nice. Now with those out of the way, let's head to the four belfries. Now from here, continue straight through the intro area, kill Vare, cause why not? And keep going forward. And we come across our first obstacle, a wall, who would have guessed? And there's only one solution. Let's backtrack to this slant and use a zip. Even the best speedrunners aren't 100% too sure how they work. Oh, uh, bro, I accidentally zipped. Oh, no no way! Pretty much, it's like a really unfun game of Guitar Hero, where the song is exactly 133 frames long, and there's one note you have to press at exactly frame 129, which you hold for 4 frames and release perfectly on frame 133. But wanna know the absolutely hardest part of it? You need stable 60 frames to do this in Elden Ring, what? Eventually, I play my horrible game of Guitar Hero, and there we go. On to the next area. Head straight and grab this grace, which will be important later. And keep going. Another game of Guitar Hero to hop over this gap. And if you're wondering what those four ticks are, it's just there to help with the timing of the zip. Next, we'll use the not-so-secret-secret -secret side path to avoid Stormvale and continue straight to the entrance of Liurnia around this area. The path down is way out of line, but you can actually scale down this rock face, which gets you to the bottom. Then keep heading straight, one more rock face, and we've made it to Liurnia. Keep going forward, and yeah, we're stuck. Cause, you know, all of Rhea Lucaria is literally in the way. But you can actually still make it to the four belfries, all the way back at the lake facing cliffs. And it's with our good old zip. The initial path had us running all the way over here, but Mitris found something better. Except one, one caveat. It's not humanly viable. This is where we introduce external tools, yay! What it does is literally just play the game of Guitar Hero for me. To start, stand on this rock and face the opposite direction. Why? Cause what zips do are accelerate you at such an ungodly speed that you'll fly way too far, and bouncing off the wall will reduce the total distance. Perform the zip and look at that, we've landed on the only possible area within the line. And on the horizon is our goal. Another zip and we fall at the four belfries. Why we don't die is actually super simple. Fall damage is decided by our starting and landing position. So even though we fell from this height, what we landed on was a net positive, telling the game we actually moved up instead of down. This is why we can't zip to anywhere in Liurnia, since the ending position is a negative from the starting one. Now here, grab the key and the grace, and we're off to Faramazula. From here, it's the famous wrong warp. What we're doing is gaslighting the game into thinking we're in Faramazula. To do this, I favorited a grace, which, when has that ever been a thing? Anyways, I use the memory grace, which is supposed to bring us to the four belfries. Although once activated, I immediately button mash to my favorites, which would be to Stormhill, and wait to hear this symbol crashing. Now you'll be falling in a void at Stormhill, and all you have to do is quit out before you die which now breaks the game and brings us to the area where we're gonna have to kill Malekith. Next is just hopping on this ledge and zipping straight at the door. Walk through and, oh, there it is, the boss arena. Turn directly around, jam into this corner, and we're gonna absolutely throw ourselves at this pillar. 
The slant should angle it so we bounce straight at the arena, which now we're on top. And look at that, there's Malakath. But we pretty much need to, like, own the hell out of him and kill him. And there's something bigger, worse, and more, more, more zippier. A mega zip. Pretty much what it is is adding another note to the Guitar Hero song. And the song looks like this. Hold block for 132 frames, then press walk for 7 frames, wait 14 frames, and on the 14th frame press walk. Yeah, that's, that's not a fun game of Guitar Hero. So this is where I bring back the external tool. This application will press the buttons for me, so I don't spend forever doing it. Now we just zip straight ahead into the ether and fall. And after falling, we explode and, and die. But that is how we can kill Malekith. If you're in this falling animation for more than 12 seconds, you die. So by using a mega zip, it shoots us so far that everything in the world has deloaded. Except for Malekith, causing him to also fall. But now that we're both free falling, I need to outlast the 12 second timer. And it's really not that hard. All I have to do is just attack, and it changes the animation, resetting the timer. Now Malekith will fall and die. Which is a lie, because it just beats the first phase, and we're teleported back. Except there's one caveat, and he's as present as my upload schedule. I mean that by, you literally can't find or kill him. Soft locking us. Except there is a way out. And there's another zip setup that bounces us through this wall where we can walk through the fog gate on the correct side. And it should have been easy, but I forgot to have a heavy load. Certain zips are possible by either having a heavy load or a medium load. And I forgot to do it. Which put, I think like 4 hours down the drain. Although after finally getting correct, I do the zip and we can now fight Malika. This fight is really hard. Kind of impossible when your run back is a wrong warp and 3 zips. So let's try and go on a training arc. First thing I need is a better weapon. And we had some options. Kill the Tree Sentinel and get the Golden Halberg, but it needs somber smithing stones, which there weren't enough of. There's also the Carrion Knight Sword, which is just beyond the Four Belfries, where it could scale down this wall. Although, surviving all of these enemies for a weapon that scales in intelligence isn't really what I want to do. So next, I thought, okay, I can farm the Alvernerix and get the Curved Club. It's not bad, has sea level scaling, and I can level it with normal smithing stones, which there's one on the anvil. But that's the only one. And to get plus three, I need to farm 11 more smithing stones. And my only option really was the 2% chance from the Godric soldiers. But to get one took me 16 minutes of farming, so it's on to the next thing. And I can actually head in the opposite direction. By going behind the spawn and using a zip to cross this gap, I can barely land on this ledge where I don't fall and die. From here, I can run back to the church and grab this grace. Now, we just head straight, use the spirit jump to go farther, and then cross this bridge. And at the end is a certain enemy we need. The Lesser Demi-Human Chief. It has a 4% chance to drop the Bloodstained Dagger, which inflicts bleed. Next was just farming to kill it, and eventually I got the weapon. But what's better than one? Two! Oh yeah, I actually got two of these little knives. And with those, I can use my L2 ability to deal many more hits, building up bleed faster. And I decided to try it out at the Tree Sentinel. Which I, I couldn't kill. I'm not that good at this game, but man that damage is bad. So the next option was to level up a bit. So the soft cap for health is 40, and the mid cap for strength is 55. That means I need 58 more levels and around 1.4 million runes. If my farming route was the Cave of Knowledge, it would take around 230 hours to get that many runes. So what about killing these Albanurix at the Academy Gate Town? Well, that's, uh, that's 61 hours. So I checked out the simple Stormhill route, and that brought it down to a mere 40. So for a final try, I thought, what if I wrong warp, zip in Fair Missoula using a macro, zip onto the arena, and then do the mega zip that unloads the area, which then gets me 7,000 runes. From here, I can quit out and go back to the start. And my plan was just to repeat it over and over again, but a second time gave me nothing. I assume the enemy falls, dies, and then stays dead. I could die, go back to the four belfries, perform the wrong warp, pick up my runes, and then do the mega zip to make the 7,000 again, but I'd have to do that 180 times. And that's just way too hard. 
And honestly, I, I didn't know what to do from here. I was pretty sick of this challenge and did not feel like just getting good and beating Malika. But there was one more thing I can do. Go to the usual path and do the zip to the other side of the fog gate. And instead of an insane training arc one hit death, I'd run away and zip to this ledge. From here, we're safe. Then one more to get to this opening. A little bit of maneuvering on the invisible ground, and you know what's gonna happen. Another mega zip puts not just us, but also Malekith into a free fall, and he dies to the 12 second timer. We are now at the final area. Aim around this spot, use the usual zip, and we charge full speed at the Earth Tree, heading over this arena, through the doors, and straight into a trunk where we hit an invisible wall, and we land. We're in the middle of the Earth Tree. This will now load in the area. Utilizing our old tricks, aim right in between the two fiery bark and zip. Everything behind us despawns. Attack exactly after 3 seconds and Godfrey's first phase will die to the 12 second fall. Bringing us right back to the arena and we die to Godfrey. The zip, just like Malekith, only beats his first phase and I'm not good enough to kill him. I don't think I can beat this, it's... It's not over, I lied. Because earlier when we landed, it loaded in not just Godfrey, but also the Elden Beast who lives right under the Earth Tree. And unlike Godfrey and Malekith, it doesn't have another phase, meaning it's been free falling this entire time, and dies to the 12 second timer before we get killed. We respawn, and our final straight path ends the game. And that's how you beat Elden Ring in a straight line. By only using teleporters, down patching, a buffer zone, a professional speedrunner, and an external tool. You know, maybe not the most possible, but it was fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. I'll see you later.